Casa Silencio, our haven for the elderly and infirm priests of Cubao, a labor of love and dedication designed to provide comfort and care for those who have served us faithfully for years. Despite facing unforeseen challenges, we are delighted to announce that construction has resumed with a new contractor on board. We are moving forward with renewed hope and reimagining structure. The design of Casa Silencio has been thoughtfully updated, reflecting our commitment to creating a sanctuary that truly honors our beloved shepherds. Our target completion is now set for 2025. And with your continued support, we are confident that this vision will soon become a reality. To all who have contributed to this project thus far, we express our heartfelt gratitude your kindness has created a sanctuary where our priests can seek solace and tranquility but we still need your help to bring this dream to completion we ask you to open your hearts once again and support the final stages of this important project details of how you can contribute will be shared through your local parish. As we move forward, let us not forget the importance of caring for those who have guided us on our spiritual journeys. Together, we can ensure that our shepherds are cared for with the love and respect they truly deserve.
Good morning, brothers and sisters. Today is Tuesday in the 30th week in Ordinary Time. The presider for our Eucharistic celebration is Bishop Ness. Please stand. Glory to our God, who alone is right to our days. Many are the blessings He brings to those who trust in His ways. We the daughters and sons of King, who build the bodies and plays. Praise the wonders of God. to our God, who alone gives light to our days. Many are the blessings He gives to those who trust in His ways. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. We know that we were born to know, to love, and serve the Lord. The more we come to know Him, the more our life finds meaning in spite of tragedies, problems, difficulties, for in the Lord we have light. To prepare ourselves for this Eucharistic celebration, let us ask forgiveness for all our shortcomings and sins. You were sent with a contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, increase our faith, hope, and charity, and make us love what you command, so that we may merit what you promise. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, be subordinate to one another out of reverence for Christ. Wives should be subordinate to their husbands as to the Lord, for the husband is head of his wife, just as Christ is head of the church he himself the savior of the body as the church is subordinate to christ so wives should be subordinate to their husbands in everything husbands love your wives even as christ loved the church and handed himself over for her to sanctify her cleansing her by the bath of water with a word, that he might present to himself the church in splendor, without spot or wrinkle or any such thing, that she might be holy and without blemish. So also husbands should love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself for no one hates his own flesh but rather nourishes and cherishes it 
even as Christ does the church, because we are members of his body. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and his mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak in reference to Christ and the church. In any case, each one of you should love his wife as himself, and the wife should respect her husband. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Blessed are those who fear the Lord. Blessed are those who fear the Lord. Blessed are you who fear the Lord, who walk in his ways. For you shall eat the fruit of your handiwork. Blessed shall you be and favored. Blessed are those who fear the Lord. Your wife shall be like a fruitful vine in the recesses of your home. Your children, like olive plants, around your table. Blessed are those who fear the Lord. Behold, thus is the man blessed who fears the Lord. The Lord bless you from Zion. May you see the prosperity of Jerusalem all the days of your life. Blessed are those who fear the Lord. Please stand. Blessed are you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth. You have revealed to little ones the mysteries of the kingdom. Hallelujah, 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 The Lord be with you. And, and with you your spirit. spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory, Glory to you, to you O Lord. Lord. Jesus said, What is the kingdom of God like? To what can I compare it? It is like a mustard seed that a man took and planted in the garden. When it was fully grown, it became a large bush, and the birds of the sky dwelt in its branches. Again he said, To what shall I compare the kingdom of God? It is like yeast that a woman took and mixed it with three measures of wheat flour until the whole batch of dough was leavened. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So we have been reflecting in the first reading, the letter of Paul to the Ephesians. I said this covers only six chapters, very short, and we'll be taking this for uh, till Thursday. And uh, we are now in the fourth part of the letter. As I said, it has five parts. The fourth part, we will concentrate on that because the main focus is daily conduct, contributing to unity. In Christ, we have been united. God has gathered all nations, all people together. This is the mission of the church. That's the third part. That is to gather all nations for members of the church through their daily conduct. The way we live our faith, we contribute 
to the unity of the church. So we heard this morning how unity can be achieved when we follow our main model. It is Christ who was humbled. He gave himself for the church. So when we speak about husbands, wives, respecting each other, you know, we, our main reference is Jesus because He gave up Himself for His bride, the church. So, husband and wife, they should not compete. They should work as a team. They should work in tandem, you know, re respecting each other, just like Christ, always looking at our good. Even if we have some shortcomings, weaknesses, he looks at the positive side, what we can become. We can become holy, we can become good, because we came from God and we were created according to His image and likeness. So we'll hear more about this in the coming days. So there's the unity in institution, in marriage, in the family, and the way we live our faith in a community in the gospel again we continue jesus preaching about the kingdom of god and uh, he uses two parables parable the mustard seed very tiny uh, just like a tiny pepper not the big one okay but tiny and yet once it's planted it grows into a big bush and even birds of the air can build their nests so same thing with the kingdom of god same thing with goodness we start with something small and then through the power of god's love it becomes bigger and bigger and what's uh, again very interesting is the second parable it's like the yeast again some of us they know how to make or they know yeast you mix it with flour and then it makes the dough rise so there is this principle of contagion or contamination we have a saying if you have a rotten apple you put it in a bunch of apples it can easily destroy the other apples in the container so the principle of contamination contagion now this is about evil contagious but it's also about good good can be can easily spread we get affected by the good example of other people then we spread what is good and that's our mission to continue to spread what is good the principles of the kingdom then uh, we know that that is our mission we are able to accomplish it it's because of the Lord who continues to accompany us to give us the grace to transform not just our lives but people's lives through our interaction with them so this is a challenge of the gospel all of us are meant to be like a mustard seed through a tiny work simple act of charity simple act of love simple encouragement simple you know a pat in the back a smile that can affect people very contagious on the other hand evil can also affect other people being angry being jealous planning revenge getting even this destroys whereas the power of the good it unites it gives life it makes us free people of God. Amen. Jesus compared the kingdom of heaven to a mustard seed. It may have a humble and small beginning, but it is destined to become great. 
encompassing all peoples of the earth. May we all work for God's kingdom. Let our response be, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. May we not associate the kingdom of God with earthly power and glory, and so must not despise its small beginnings, we pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. May the kingdom of God that subsists in the church strain from its initial budding towards its full comple completion in Christ in glory, we pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. May Christian act as yeast in the world to give growth to the gospel in the lives of men and women, we pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. May the church serve like a large bush or tree where people can take refuge in time of danger and difficulties. We pray, Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. May we strive to be a community that cherishes the little details of life, like Jesus who pointed out to the disciples the little mustard seed, the two small coins of the widow, and the one sheep that was missing. We pray, Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Everlasting God, the seed of the kingdom was planted and watered by Jesus by his own precious blood. May it bear much fruit through the faith, hope, and love of believers. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be made acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Look, we pray, O Lord, on the offerings we make your majesty, that whatever is done by us in your service, may be directed above all to your glory through christ our lord amen the lord be with you and with your spirit lift up your hearts we lift them up to the lord let us give thanks to the lord our god it is right and just it is truly right and just our duty in our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks lord holy father Almighty and eternal God. For, although you have no need of our praise, yet our thanksgiving is itself your gift. Since our praises add nothing to your greatness, what profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord? And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we proclaim. Yes. 
the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore, this gives we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them, like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered really into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my party, which will be given up for you. A similar way when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Please stand. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope and me your unworthy servant and all the clergy remember also brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy welcome them into the light of your face have mercy on us all we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs with eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through Him and with Him and in Him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Jesus taught us to call God our Father, and so we have the courage to pray our Father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. May your sacraments, O Lord, we pray, perfect in us what lies within them, that what we now celebrate in signs, we may one day possess in truth, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Call for the blessing. Bestow increase of heavenly grace on your faithful, O Lord. May they praise you with their lips, with their souls, with their lives. And since it's by your gift that we exist, may our whole lives be yours through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace and be hope for the world. Thanks be to God. Have a good day and blessed week ahead, everyone. Same to you, Bishop. Oh, my God.